Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks on how to sew on your parts for your amigurumi creations. So let's gather some supplies and we will jump in. So for today's project, I just created a swatch, or just um, one of our mallard duck patterns. Um, I've done everything except for sewing on the pieces, and I have all the pieces here, I have the wings, the feet, and the beak. So we will sew these on together. The other supplies we're going to need is some scissors, a darning needle, a knitting needle if you have one. I'll show you a little trick that I like to do with that and some fabric pins. So once we have everything we need, we can jump into it. All right, so I just have my body of my duck here, and the first one we're going to do is the beak. Now, this is our beak. I've already sewn together the edge. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to our darning needle. Now for this one, I'm gonna just show you my classic use of like my classic system for sewing things on and that is using fabric pins now I use these all the time they're super helpful I find if you can find really long ones like if you if you see I know that these aren't too much of a difference in length but I do think that these ones work much better so if you can find ones that are a lot longer I find that they are easier to work with, especially for amigurumi, because some of the pieces that you're sewing on can be a little bit heavier. So those bigger uh, pins, they tend to hold a little bit better. So the first thing that I always do when I'm sewing on is I'm first going to pin this to the body where I want it to be sewn. I like to have my darning needle already ready to go, so I'm not kind of fumbling with it once I'm pinned on. So for this beak, I'm going to be attaching it to uh, round nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I'm going to be attaching the top of my beak to round nine, and the edges I'm going to attach to round ten. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my nose, my beak here, as centered as I can, between my eyes and I'm just going to place a pin there and there's you can never have too many pins so just place as many pins as you need to secure it so that's the first one that I'm going to do now I want my um, I want my beak to be curved down and in order to get that shape I have to sew it that way so I'm going to curve it and I'm just going to pin it into the bottom of round 10. So here's round 9 and here is round 10. And this is truly going to be my guide for how I'm going to sew on, which is why it's important for sewing that you put in the, the work right now or else you're going to be redoing it because it's going to be crooked or it may not have the shape that you want. So I just have the three pins there and I think that that's probably okay. So that's kind of what we're looking like. I just wanna make sure that I'm centered and everything's looking good. Now, for the actual sewing on, I'm gonna take my darning needle. I personally like to use these metal darning needles. I know you can get these in plastic, but for me personally, I don't feel like the plastic ones work very well. Um, these ones are just so much more durable and easier to work with because the plastic ones just bend, in my opinion. Um, so this is what I use. I just get these off Amazon and I can link them in the description box below. They're very affordable. So um, I would say invest in a pack of different sized um, darning needles. So to start, what I'm going to do is we're going to be attaching the edge here because this is where my yarn tail is. And I always try and put my yarn tail on one end of things. So this is the corner that my yarn tail is on. So this is where I will be starting. 
And this corner, I want to be into the bottom of round 10. So I want to make sure that that's where my, my needle is going into. So I'm going to insert my needle about where I've pinned it, maybe just a little bit further over, but nothing crazy. And I'm just going to push it up a stitch like this. And I'm just going to pull that through. Next, I'm going to go into a stitch in the beak and I'm going to pull that through. And I'm going to remove my pin there that I had. Now, I'm just going to count back down again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nine, so this is where I want my beak to sit. You can see that it's the pin has kind of moved a little bit. So this is why it's important when you're sewing on to constantly be checking and counting and making sure that it's still in the right spot because these pins, they're not foolproof. They're not perfect and they will move. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm in the beak now. I'm going to insert and I'm going to go up into round nine because that's where I want my beak to sit. And then I'm going to go back into the beak here. And I'm going to line that top piece into round nine, the top of round nine. Back and forth. And if you can go stitch for stitch, that is the best you can do to make it the, the cleanest, I think. If you miss stitches, it's not the end of the world, but you probably will be able to notice. So that's what we're looking like. We're right into round nine, which is right where we want to be. Now I'm going to continue down here the same way that we did on the other side. And now we want to go back down into round 10 to complete that section where our ends are in round 10. So I'm just going to pull this down. Just like that. Now I'm just going to go back up the other side of my beak here just to secure it a little bit more because I never sewed into those. I know sewing can be like the most tedious part of, the, of a project like this, but it does create the look. So if you want it to look a certain way, you got to put the time in. Now another problem that I constantly have, especially with working with fluffy yarn, is that it falls apart. You can see here all my pieces that have fluffed off even on my project. Sometimes I find that I have to cut my yarn and tie on a new piece because I can't use the piece anymore. This is why I cut an extra long strand so that I can trim it. So I'm just going to trim that edge there and I'm just moving my darning needle down a little bit and then I'm going to keep going and hopefully I'm almost done so I should be fine. All right, so there is that. And now once I'm fully sewn on and I've removed all of my pins, all I like to do at the end is I like to just grab a stitch or two and create a little knot. And this is just gonna create a little bit more security that it's gonna stay in place for you. So then I'm just going to take my darning needle and push it to the back of the head and take it off my darning needle here. And then I usually like to attach it with something else, like tie this off with another, um, with another strand just for extra security. So I'm just gonna leave this here for now. I just trimmed it. And that is how I sew on the beak. All right, so once we have sewn on the beak, we are going to sew on the wings, and I'm going to show you another technique that I like to use. So here are my wings I have. Now, the 
um, area that we're going to be sewing on that has the strand the end of yarn that's going to be the top so wherever you're going to be sewing that's where you want your yarn in to be and for this side it's going to be the top as well now I just recently started using this technique and I love it <laughs> but basically what we're going to do is we're going to attach these wings to round 17 so I'm just going to count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 17 is right here. And I'm just going to mark that with a fabric pin. Kind of where I think I want them to be. And you want it to kind of be in line with the side where you where there would be ears if ducks had visible ears. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side, I'm just going to place a pin about there. So I think that's about where I want my wings. Now you can use fabric pins for this. I just find the bigger the piece, especially if you're sewing on a head to a body, the harder it is to pin with pins. So. Something else that I learned is using a knitting needle. So I'm just going to roughly place this where I want and I'm going to grab my knitting needle. This is just a three and a quarter millimeter needle. You can see that. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this through where I want it to sit. And then I'm going to put this one on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Like that. Now those are staying where they are. You can move them around if you need to. Move this needle around if it's not where you want it to be. But this way you can kind of get a good idea. See, I think I, think I need to move this one up a little bit. That's better. It's more in line with the head. And then all I'm going to do is place my darning needle on my yarn end here. And using the pin that I put here as a guide, making sure that I'm staying in the correct round, I'm going to insert my needle a little bit like onto the top of that round 17 and a little bit over um, and that's just to make sure that it lines up just because the stitches there are spaces and so if you put it in a stitch um, it's most likely going to move as close as it can to the next stitch so I like to do it a little bit over so then it actually ends up being in the perfect spot so I'm just going to take this pin out because I will forget it in there and I'm just going to so this wing on just like that. I grabbed some stuffing by accident. That's the other hard part, not grabbing your stuffing. You have to be very surface level with your stitches when you're sewing, but that's okay. I can fix that later. So I'm just going to sew on the, that top little piece there and I'm going to insert my darning needle back in and all I'm going to do here, I'm just going to push this out for a second and I'm just going to show you on this wing what I like to do next. Now sometimes you may want your arms or legs or wings or whatever it is you're making to be free like this, like they can flop around. I personally don't love that. I like it when it has a little bit more structure. And so I'm going to show you how I do that. So I have my darning needle right here, right next to the wing. All I'm going to do is I'm going to push it down into the last round of this brown. Right here. But I want to be in the area that's going to be covered by the wing. So once you put the wing down, it's going to be covered. 
Next, what we're going to do is we're going to find the spot that lines up with where our yarn is here. So underneath the wing, it's going to be about here. I'm going to insert my darning needle. I'm going to pull it through like this. Next, I'm going to put it right back into that same round that I was in, just maybe a stitch or two over. And I'm going to push this to the back. I'm going to pull that. And all that's going to do is it's going to keep my wing from flopping at the shoulder area. And it's just going to keep it, give it a little bit more structure. So that's what that will look like. So I'm going to sew on my other wing the same way with my needle. I'm just going to put it right back in there. Like that. I'm just going to put my darning needle on. And again, I'm just going to do the exact same thing this time. I'm all tangled in my yarn tails here, which happens a lot. But I'm just going to use that pin as a guide and sew this on. Take this out and I'm just going to attach it down the same way and I'm going to push it back to meet the other side there. So that's what we're looking like. And then on the back, I'm just going to tie a knot here. And this is just going to secure my wings. I'm just going to trim that. And I'm also going to try and pull this orange strand down to meet up with this guy so I can knot that together as well. But see, my yarn fell apart on me, so there isn't much of a string there, but I'm going to try and tie a little knot. Yeah, these are the harder parts of creating these guys, the sewing together. And then last, I'm just going to take my hook and I'm going to weave in those ends. And there is our beak and our wings sewn on. The last thing we're going to sew on together is the feet and I'm just going to use the method that I use with the fabric pins um, for this specific method. I find that if the pieces are crossed from each other, such as wings or head to body, that's when the knitting needle works the best. But for little pieces like this, I do think the fabric pins are the best. So again, just going to place this on my darning needle. Now where my yarn tail is, that's where I'm going to be sewing on. So this wide end is going to go forward and it's going to go on a bit of an angle. So I want the feet to kind of sit like that. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a pin or two. And I'm going to do the same to the other side. I just want to get a look at both of them together to make sure that they're both in the right spot. Like that, so that looks good. So I'm just going to take this one off for now because it's just harder to sew on when you have them both on there. Now for this one, I'm just going to sew on the base. Same way, I'm going to grab both sections, like both halves of the last round of the feet here. Pull that, and then I'm going to do one more, just going a little bit further over. I'm going to grab some yarn and pull that. I find this yarn so forgiving, so it really works out well. Now again, I don't like when it flaps like this, so I'm going to secure mine down. So I'm just going to go up and in and back in and down. Now for this one, I guess you could sew along the entire edge, but I personally like when it's a little bit more raised. It's, I don't know, it's not realistic. It's not more realistic, but it does give a more realistic feel for sure. So I'm just gonna sew the other one on the exact same. And then up, making sure I'm in the same area as I was in for the first foot. Push that back down. And then I always just make sure that I'm happy with the placement before I knot it. So I'm just going to place a knot again to just secure my sewing down. Just going to cut my ends and I'm going to weave that in. And that is how I sew on different body parts for the duck, but it goes for any animal different arms, legs, noses, whatever it may be. Use your tools, your pins, and your knitting needle. Whatever you find works for you. I hope that this video was helpful and I hope you enjoyed the little tips. Um, let us know in the comments down below if you have any video requests. Otherwise, we hope you have a lovely day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!